I'm in Seoul. It's uh, Monday, uh, January the 25th. Uh, behind me is uh, Trump World 3, uh, part of uh, Donald Trump's real estate empire. Donald Trump is gone now as a politician, and his star is fading very, very fast. Um, but uh, the legacy of uh, some of uh, Trump's foreign policy decisions uh, still remains. Uh, and in particular, if you live on the uh, Korean uh, Peninsula, that legacy is, is, uh, is a pretty mixed bag. On the one hand, uh, Trump has been criticized roundly for uh, not achieving anything uh, with North Korea in terms of a signed arms agreement, signed peace deal, and so forth. On the other hand, Trump did like to claim a few years ago, uh, a little bit after the terrible, terrible year of 2017, uh, that he averted uh, nuclear war. And uh, there is some truth to that uh, claim. His uh, meeting with uh, his meetings with uh, Kim Jong un were uh, denounced even by uh, the uh, right wing of uh, the Democratic Party as a sort of appeasement. Uh, but in truth, uh, it was a forward movement and it did at least establish. Uh, a kind of uh, more level-headed uh, relationship, a more stable relationship between the United States, uh, North Korea, and South Korea. And one uh, profound sign of that is the fact that there have been no uh, missile tests for, uh, for uh, close to a couple of years now. There have been no provocations. Uh, and uh, now the scuttlebutt among uh, conservative pundits is that the uh, missile tests will return. And that may very well be the case. Uh, Antony Blinken, uh, who is the new Secretary of State choice for, uh, for uh, President Joe Biden, is uh, very much uh, on the, uh, the right wing uh, side of uh, democratic uh, foreign policy thinking. Uh, what will happen next is, uh, is going to be worth watching and uh, may not be particularly uh, peaceful.